Welcome back, everyone. This is our first RNFX podcast about the European Parliament election results. My name is Angelo Zittis, and I'm here with my colleague Peter Yosif, co-hosting this podcast. Now, results were coming out sporadically on Sunday from the various member states, yet after midnight, we got a more comprehensive picture of the new political scene in the EU and the balance of power. For all of that and more, let's have a closer look. Peter, starting with the total results, what's the new picture of the EU Parliament composition if compared to the previous one? Well, we have to bear in mind that the stakes for the EU elections were high, as there was a heavy debate on whether to proceed with further unification or more Europe, as Europeans themselves call it, or if a shift could be made in the direction of more separatism and member state protection. Parties in the extreme right of populistic nature, as some analysts name them, were in favor of the latter, while at the same time center-right and center-left parties inclined more towards more unification. However, the results tend to show that there are no dramatic shifts, at least in the current elections. Despite making headlines in France and Italy, right-wing protest parties, namely Salvini's League in Italy and France's National Front in France, in raising their share of seats in the European Parliament, it may not be enough as the rise is merely from 20 to 23 percent, at least according to the provisional results and forecast. On the flip side, the four major pro-European mainstream parties fell merely from 70 to 67 percent of the seats. Hence, we can safely say that it may not be exactly business as usual, yet the main direction seems to remain unchanged. Please bear in mind that On the other hand, one could expect some headlines about the shifts in the top EU top jobs. Making a step back and looking at the big picture, one could say that the new EU political stage shows as winners the far right, the Greens and the Liberals, while at the same time the far left, center left and center right are on the retreat. Also, some more polarization may be in play and may be a bit more fragmented, as the dominant position of the center-left and center-right is still present, yet at the same time weaker. In terms of issues, voters seem to worry mostly for two main subjects. The first would be immigration, while the second environmental issues. In general, given the majorities created, pro-EU parties were attacked, yet at the same time held ground with a new balance of power. Okay, so you mentioned that one of the questions is who is about to get the top jobs in the EU. Yeah, there are three main jobs which are expected to be replaced in the current year. The first would be the head of the EU Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker's position. Until now, the main idea was for a centre-right top candidate, Manfred Weber from Germany, to replace him. Also, the fact that Germany is one of the largest, if not the largest, member state and never had secured the position increases Weber's chances. On the other hand, it should be noted that the People's Party has lost a substantial amount of seats. Hence, Weber may have a difficult task ahead of him, especially as the Green Party and the Liberals strengthen substantially and may be opposing his candidacy. Also, we would be keeping a back door open for any possible objections of French President Emmanuel Macron, which may claim the position for a French candidate, also to pacify voters and blunten the effects of the negative results back home. That brings us to the second big job. The President of the European Central Bank, the ECB, Mario Draghi, is to step down, so the seat is also open for grabs. Main contenders seem to be Francois Villeroy de Galao or German Buber President Weidmann, being possible replaces for Draghi depending on who succeeds Juncker. We would also like to note the name of Finland's Ole Ren as a possible successor of Mario Draghi. Last but not least is the EU Council presidency. Donald Tusk is expected to leave the position as he is badly asked for back home. Some argue even earlier than December 2019 when his term ends. We could see a candidate from a smaller state posing as his successor, maybe even trying to create some cohesion in order to get a more widely accepted candidate. Peter, 
uh, are the results of the EU Parliament elections about to indirectly affect also national politics? Definitely, the results are to have various effects on various countries. As the results at the national level are usually also regarded as mirroring local politics and could have far-reaching effects on the EU. For example, the Greek government party Syriza suffered a heavy defeat and the incumbent Prime Minister Tsipras is announced the possibility of calling early elections, probably in June. Currently, the center-right opposition party leads the polls and should it come to power, we could expect it to maintain the difficult reforms program regarding the Greek economy, which actually has started to bring some small but still positive results. So little risk exists from stemming from Greece right now. Uh, what's happening with Germany? In Germany, both parties of the governmental coalition, the SPD and the CDU, CDU, suffered defeats in the EU parliament elections, but the SPD was hit particularly hard. Both parties scored one of the lowest results ever. At the same time, Germany's Greens have strengthened substantially. The issue in Germany is the stability of the government, as there are tendencies within the SPD to leave the government grand coalition with the CDU and pass into the opposition. We expect those tendencies to strengthen and despite it not being obvious, there is an underlying risk for the German government and Merkel could be in trouble. Analysts tend to focus that even in the case the SPD leaves the coalition, the CDU would be able to form a new coalition government with the Greens and maybe the Liberals. However, given that in the past such negotiations fell through, there may be difficulties for such a formation, especially as the Greens may start asking for more. Our base scenario for the time being is for Angela Merkel to remain in power. However, we plan to keep a close eye on German politics in the near term. Let's go back to France and to Emmanuel Macron, uh, who suffered a defeat. What is the story there? Well, Emmanuel Macron's Marché, a centrist party, had also a clear loss against Le Pen's right-wing national rally. It should be mentioned, though, that despite Le Pen's party coming in first, it seems to have failed to capitalize on the Yellow Vest movement, as it may have lost some ground if compared to the previous EU parliament elections. On the contrary, the Greens strengthened substantially, reaching 13.5%. Despite Marine Le Pen making headlines, a calmer approach could show that Macron still has the upper hand in French politics, and for the time being, his party maintains a majority in the French parliament, which could enable him to proceed with reforms. Okay, so uh, when we started, you had also mentioned Italy Salvini. How do the results affect Italy? Well, in Italy, the right-wing Lega had a marked rise, reaching 34.3%, consolidating its position as the strongest right-wing part in Italy. There are also two other results which are of interest, though. The first is that the Five Star Movement dropped to 17.1%, and the second is that the Social Democrats made a comeback, surpassing the Five Star Movement and reaching 22.7%. Now, despite a number of analysts predicting that the League may pursue to end its coalition with the Five Star Movement, we wouldn't be so sure yet, as the current stage, no possible replacement seems to be, exist. Um, let's go now to the UK. Uh, are the results affecting the UK as well? Indirectly, yes. Practically, Given the recently announced resignation of Theresa May, the race to replace her has already started. Nigel Farage's win in the EU Parliament elections could shift the agenda in the Tory party leadership contest, probably favoring hard Brexiteers. A second loser of the EU Parliament elections in the UK is the Liberal Party, and it's reflecting that conservative party share which remains pro-EU and is disappointed by the Tory stance, practically strengthening the Liberal Party. Also, 
The Labour Party lost a substantial amount of its voters, landing third and weakening the main opposition party. We see the results as mirroring a deeply divided nation over Brexit, and at the current stage expect the Tory rhetoric about Brexit to harden over the short term, and maybe the UK stands against the EU in any possible future negotiations. Are there any other interesting results? Uh, we would move to Central Europe and particularly start with Poland. Poland, we had a very strong result for the incumbent PIS party, which is a populist party. It had a number of clashes with the EU Commission in the past. And such a strengthening could provide practically the grounds for further confrontation in creating of further headlines. The same applies for Hungary's Fidesz party, which is also an incumbent party in Hungary this time, also populist, also right-wing, also had clashes with the EU Commission. So practically we could see in the near future those clashes being enhanced and the confrontation between those countries and the EU Commission being more intense. I would also like to mention the possibility of Austria's coalition parties uh, more or less resolving into a dissolution of the government. Uh, developments had already started before the EU elections. However, after the results came out, developments seemed to be escalating and practically becoming more rapid. And uh, the current councillor in Austria could be in trouble there. Excellent. So, for our final question, do you expect any effect on the euro currency? Analysts until now had more or less considered, also the ECB had such a claim that the uncertainty of uh, the EU Parliament elections was weighing on the euro. And keeping it down. Now the elections are over. The results more or less show us that things haven't changed that dramatically. So politically speaking, there should be more stability regarding the euro. On the flip side, should Italy Salvini try to bend EU budget fiscal rules, we could see tensions rise again and volatility rising again for the euro. Thank you very much, Peter. It's been a very interesting chat. Um, for more information, make sure you visit our webpage, uh, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, if you've heard something that could help you, make sure you apply it and use it. And this is Angelo Zittis from RFX. Wishing you solid trading and we'll see you soon.